world today. It's going rampant. People are putting marks and holes in their bodies more than ever before. The world, it seems, has gone crazy. It wasn't that many years ago you had to go to a sleazy side of town to go to a tattoo shop. Now, they're everywhere. And they've got plenty of customers. There's one on the outskirts of Tyler going into Tyler from, uh, from Chandler. And get this, the name of the place is Redeeming Tattoo. I don't care what kind of name you put on it. Amen. It's still mutilation of God's temple. And I'm not talking about people in this place tonight that uh, allowed those things to happen when they were out in the world. Sister, you understand that? But I want you to stand up. Because every master puts his mark on his servants. You hear what I'm saying? I said every master puts his marks on his servants. Now when she was a servant to sin... I want you to look at the marks that he put on her. Don't be embarrassed. But this happened as a servant to sin. Because, see, the devil likes to have his servants identified. Amen? As a matter of fact, every master likes to have his servants identified. Hallelujah. And you can be seated. God bless you. And so, there is a spirit loose in this world because the devil is trying to put identifying marks on everybody that he's got control of. And you can go down the gamut. You, you can go down the full gamut of what the devil does, of what people that are out there in the world do. It can go from orange hair to green hair to purple hair. It can go from tattoos all over the body. You know, at my age, I remember a time when, when women wore earrings. A, a lot of the earrings that were worn in that day were clip-on. It didn't make a mark in the body. They just clipped it on the earlobe. But you see, the devil wasn't satisfied with that. You see, he's never satisfied. And when women began to pierce their ears, they had one place in their ear that was pierced. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. And it started out that way. And you didn't see any men with pierces in their ears. But it started with the women. And there'd be one place in each earlobe. And they'd wear their ear stud or whatever. But now, what do you see? I mean, sometimes it'll line the whole earlobe. 
didn't come up. Identifying marks that the master is putting on his servants. Amen. And now it started with the men. And see, the ear is not enough now. Now it's got to be the, it's got to be the lip, it's got to be the nose, it's got to be the tongue, it's got to be the eyebrow, it's got to be the belly button, it's got to be all over the place. Because he's never satisfied with the identifying marks that he puts on his servants. So when the Hebrew slave had served for six years, he had to be set free. And the master, as he was setting him free, what did I read to you? That he didn't send him out empty. That he had to give to him out of his, out of his provisions that he had. He had to supply him as he sent him away in freedom. Does that sound like anything that the devil does? <laughs> no, the devil, if you ever get loose from him, he has taken everything in the world from you. I said he's taken everything in the world from you. Amen. He has robbed you. He has stolen from you. Amen. And he's taken you down all the way to the bottom, if possible. But the Hebrew slave was sent out with provisions. Amen. Because God said, if he's been with you six years, you got to let him go. been often that when it came time to be set free that the Hebrew slave he went to his master and said what if I don't want to go I like it here I love you as my master my family loves you and I don't want to leave can I stay? And the Lord said if he does that, and he wants to stay because it's his decision and his love for you as his master, you take him to the doorpost, and you take an awl, which was a sharp instrument that they used for drilling holes or punching holes in leather. He said, you take him to the doorpost and you put his ear against that doorpost and you drive that all through his ear. And he will be your servant from now on. Because you see that identifying mark that you put on him is a sign of a love slave. Hallelujah. He's staying with you because he loves you. He's staying with you because he doesn't want to go out there. But he's got it just fine where he is. And he wants to stay with you and serve you because he loves you. And you put that identifying mark on him. Drive that all through his ear. I'm telling you tonight that everybody is going to serve somebody. Amen. You're going to serve sin unto death. Or you're going to serve God. But I don't think that God doesn't like to put his marks on 
his servants too. <laughs> because I want you to know his servants stand out in the world that we live in. The way that our Pentecostal women dress. Amen. Not exposed in their body by the way they dress. Even in the hot summertime. Hallelujah. But there's an identifying mark that they are living for God. And they do it because they love Him. Amen. That identifying mark is uncut hair. Amen. That's scripture, right? Amen. Glory. Why do you think God wanted it? I said, why do you think God wanted it? Because he wanted a separation between male and female. Amen. And so our Pentecostal women don't cut their hair. Why? Because it is, it is their glory, the scripture says, that a woman's long hair is her glory. And that glory is unto God. But it identifies that they are a servant of the king. I said it identifies that they are a servant to the master. Hallelujah. I'm glad tonight that there is a servant to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You know why he wants our women not to have makeup? Because he doesn't want them to look like the devil's slaves. You hear what I'm saying? I said he doesn't want them to look like the world's slaves. Amen. Everybody's going to serve somebody. I said, everybody's going to serve somebody. You just got to make up your mind who you're going to serve. Amen. 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 Praise God. Brother Condi, when I mow my yard, I don't put a short so I don't go out and mow the yard. I don't put a muscle shirt on and go out and mow the yard. When I go down to the park, take my little grandson down to the park, right down from our house, I dress with the pants on. When I go down to the park and walk for exercise, I don't put any nice little shorts on, little Nike shorts or whatever, and walk around the park. No, sir. I have on pants. Because I want to be identified with the master. You hear what I'm saying tonight? I want to be identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want the world to know that there's something different about me. And you do it out of love. I said you do it out of love. That Hebrew slave stayed out of love. And he was saying, it's okay. You put that mark on me. Amen. Because I want the world to know that I love you and that I stay because I love you. Put that mark on me. And I say the same thing tonight. God, put your mark on me. Amen. Let me go to that door. Let me go to that door. And you drive that all through my spiritual ear. Let 
Because like I said, love will make you do things that the world doesn't understand. When you really fall in love with the Master, it will make you do things that you didn't think you would ever do. Hallelujah. Because there are men and women doing it today. There are women that are apostolic tonight that at one time said, I could never dress that way. But you know what? They fell in love with the master. I said, they fell in love with the master. There are apostolic women and men that said, I never be Pentecostal, but when they got the Holy Ghost and love, but they not get a hold of them, they do things that they said they'd never do, and it's because of love. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. But everybody's going to be a servant to something. Many people in the world today are servant to a little old thing about that long. And they stick it in their mouth and they light it. And they're a servant to it. I said they're a servant to it. Many people in the world today are a servant to the bottle. Or they're a servant to drugs. Or they're a servant to a number of different things. But I'm telling you tonight, there's nothing like serving the master. I said there's nothing like serving God Almighty, the master of everything. Because you know what the end result is of loving him and serving him? It's eternal life. I said it's eternal life. That is the end result. Praise God. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Listen to the words of Jesus. Luke chapter 16. And verse 13. Luke 16 and 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. From the New King James Version, it says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Everybody's going to be a slave to something. That's why I made the statement earlier in this message. Slavery will never be abolished. Because the kind of slavery that I'm talking about, you either do it out of bondage, because the devil has got his grip on somebody's life, and yes, I will admit that there are people that love sin. And they love living that way. But you see, they don't see the end result. They don't see what it's going to lead them to. Because what's the, what's the wages of sin? 